Ah, yes. The art of character customization. Such a cool feature that really makes you feel like you're making the game as personal to yourself as you can. There are lots of developers out there that apply this feature to their own game, some better than others, but some games have a long legacy of allowing you to make your character look exactly the way you want them. Some people just want to recreate themselves and put themselves into the game, and other people want to make a character that just looks really cool. Maybe uh, doesn't look like them in real life, but why is that? And you might be thinking, Clambo, this question doesn't really need to be dived into. It's just a just an easy answer. And I would say, well, why don't you just shut the fuck up and watch the video? Because in this video, we're going to look at a few things. What is a good character customization system? What kind of characters do people make? And why do they make them? And is there such a thing as a real life character customization? Now look, I know I just spat a lot at you, but all of that will be answered and more right now. You guys have like no idea where this video is going, so you better stick around and find out. Now, what is character customization in a video game? Look, it ain't fucking rocket science, so I ain't gonna sit here and explain it to you that long. It's just you make a character and you send them out to do your fucking bidding. That's it. You give them a name, you give them certain attributes, you change his facial features and his body features, and you make them your own. That's it. But to begin with what character customization has turned into today, I'm finna go way back to the early days of it. That's what I wanna look at. Where did it come from? I'm not gonna dive super, super deep into it. I just wanna give you guys an idea of where it all started with making your character in a video game. And I'm talking, we're gonna go to 1975, just after the movie Jaws was first released in theaters and after our boy Dick Nix was involved in the Watergate scandal. But we're not getting into that today. What we are getting into is this, with a game called The Dungeon. Now, this game was just a video game version of Dungeons and Dragons. And this game was conceived on an old PDP-10 PC. Now this bitch was probably running a fucking, uh, a, a GeForce GTX 1. We ain't even gonna get into the specs of that bad boy. And it probably sounded just like a PS4 starting up. But the game was an unlicensed game. But to my knowledge and, and, and research, this was the oldest game that implemented some sort of character customization. And when I say like customization, I really only mean your name. Uh, that was it. Your name, and you can change the, the specs of your, your character, like your roles, what your um, attributes were. But that was it. Just like D&D, you gave your character predetermined stats. There wasn't much you can change, so you could argue it wasn't really character customization. But it's my fucking video, so I'm gonna say it is character customization. Lots of games that came out shortly after that had that same sort of character editor instead of fully changing the appearance of the character themselves. I'm talking games like Dragon Warrior, which later turned into like the Dragon Quest series, or just the original Final Fantasy, which turned into Final Fantasy. In, and in both of those games, you could change your name and you can change the different weapons you had. More specifically, in Final Fantasy, you could change the names of your people you had in your squad which was a pretty big step up if you ask me. And after that, you know, over time, it started to become more detailed, going from changing your weapon to changing the color of your weapon, changing the color of your armor. Then it turned into, you know, all the stuff we know today. Sims, Dark Souls, and dare I say, WWE. All three of those franchises, I would say, really carved a popularity with creating your character because they all have like, different sliders and different adjustments to make your character look like exactly the way you want them proportionally. Like you can literally change the shape of your features on your face. Like look how far that system's come in just 30 years. From 1975 to 2005, it really just kind of stepped up their game in that department. And obviously now that technology has improved, we can get more detailed with how we create our characters. And now, there are so many games with some sort of character design system in there. And honestly, 
it's such a good part of the game when it's introduced. Like, the game could be like a two out of 10, but you add a character customization system decently, and it'll bump it up on the rally review rating. Only if it's a good system. But Glam Rally, what does that actually mean? All right, listen up, you fuckheads. You're about to learn something. Now, if we're looking into a good system, what do you expect to see? There's a few things you can look out for and ask yourself. Are there sliders? And if there are sliders, to what degree do these little sliders adjust the character's features? Like how big or how small can you make the character's nose? How far apart can you make the character's eyes? Is there a color spectrum for the skin that's just a straight up like rainbow? Is it just light skin tone, dark skin tone? Or is there like any sort of skin tone you can make it so your character looks like a freaking alien? How many hairstyles are there? And do they encompass hairstyles from a very large demographic? <clears throat> Black hairstyles. Different eye, nose, mouth, and ear options? Different legs and arms options? If it's a game where you don't like see your character himself, are the options that are there like diverse? Like if you're selecting armor pieces where you don't see the actual face of your character, are the armor pieces diverse? These are the questions I ask myself when looking for a good character customization system. And to answer this question properly, we have a new segment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time for the Rapid Rally Review! In this segment, I've made a brief list of 11 different games that I shall be rating based off of some of the aforementioned questions about their own character customization. Now, as a certain rapper would have it, let's go! We'll start with Monster Hunter Rise. There are a good amount of facial feature options and different sliders to adjust them. There are also face paint, makeup, and scar options as well as accessories, and you can adjust and position all of them. And for the face paint and the scars, there's also a rainbow slider to adjust the color of it to whatever you want it to be. The only downsides are that you can only adjust your face and your hair. You can't adjust your body. And also, they could add in a few more hairstyles. Looking over this recording, I realized I forgot that you can change your palico and your palimute. I was about to give it a seven, but I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10. Astral Chain. This one, pretty average. There are a wide range of skin tone, eye color, and hair options. And there are a decent amount of hair options, but not from a large demographic. You're also not able to change any of the body features. And there are a couple options for different outfits in the game, but overall, pretty average. Five out of 10. Destiny 2. Now, a couple of good things about this is that there are more than one race of characters you can choose from. And there are a handful of color options for markings and hair color. However, you're not really able to adjust your face shape or any features much. There are also not many facial features and hair to choose from. The game seems pretty bare bones. There are no sliders, so it's not that great. Three out of 10. Stardew Valley. Honestly, I was surprised at how good this was. Plenty of skin tone options, lots of hair options, lots of clothing options. Not the best one, but it's very nice for what it is. Seven out of 10. And you get a cat or a dog. Jump force. I hate this game, but the character customization isn't half bad. In a game about anime, you just ought to have a lot of hairstyles to choose from. Also, lots of eye and facial feature options to choose from, including facial markings and facial scars. So if you want to look like the most niche anime character out there, Naruto, now you can! There are also lots of outfits to choose from, a little later on in the game, but again, you can look like Naruto! However, there is body modification, but the body modification is very light. You can change how tall and how short you are. I hate this game. Six and a half out of 10. Cyberpunk 2077. 
Even though the game had a rocky launch, the game managed to crank out a decent customization system. There are lots of options to customize, different variety of hairstyle, cool accessories and piercings, and eye types, and colors. There's also body customization. You can change the size of your penis! And your titties! There are a lot of different things to choose from to customize, but each option has kind of a limited selection. And for that, I'll also give it a 6.5 out of 10. Soul Calibur 6. I haven't played Soul Calibur in years, and I was so surprised how much you can customize in this game. Body and facial feature adjustment sliders, lots of different races to choose from, human and non-human, tons and tons of armor to equip on your character, and sliders to adjust to position, width and height of the armor on your body and a rainbow adjustment for your skin color. I give it an 8 out of 10. Grand Theft Auto Online. All right, I'm not gonna lie, this just sucked some big dick. All right, maybe it's not that bad, but I didn't really like it that much. There are lots of different feature options to choose from, but I feel like with those options, when you change them, they didn't really make a difference in how you look. Also, the way you started out was you picked how your parents look and you, uh, basically chose how you look based off of them. It was an interesting concept, but I didn't really care for it. But there were a lot of different masks and outfits you can choose from to put on. So I'll give it five out of 10. And finally, the big three. Starting with Elden Ring. Do I even have to explain myself? There are literally adjustments for everything. The nose depth, length, position, height, width, protrusion, slant, and all those things you can change on any facial feature. Tons of different hairstyles, lots of different skin tone options, eye color, facial scars, eye shadow, and you can adjust features on your body, how thick your arms and legs are, and your abdomen, and your chest, and your head size. The only thing that's holding it back is you can't really give your character any like super, super wacky proportions like two other games on this list. I give Elden Ring 9 out of 10. WWE. I've oh, never played shit. the game. Uh oh, who's, who's coming this? out first? Who's coming out? Uh oh. <laughs> oh hell yeah. <laughs> that should honestly speak for itself. It's got everything. Change the sliders on your body appearance, different clothes you can wear, hairstyles, skin tone, everything. If you can make a character look like that, then sky's the limit. 10 out of 10. The Sims. This game is the same deal as WWE. You have sliders to change your eyes and sliders to change your body appearance. Lots of different hair, clothing, and outfit options. And plenty of accessories. You can even get wild and crazy with it. But unfortunately, not as crazy as you can with mod. Some of the stuff I'm showing is from mods and that's okay but we're gonna give this a 9 out of 10. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this segment. Thank you so much for watching the very first Rapid Rally Review. I'll see you all next time. Now, when it comes to the types of characters people create, this can range from a direct recreation to an absolute monstrosity, okay? The whole range. I know for me, a lot of times I just tend to make a cool looking character and sometimes make a sort of meme character because it's fucking funny. Because it's a fucking video game. Maybe if you make a character that looks more like yourself, then maybe you don't have as many insecurities in real life as other people. Maybe you see yourself as okay looking enough to put yourself in the video game. Other people might look to see that they don't like themselves so they want to create someone else. We all know the meme where it's like, in the real world, I'm the loser, but in the game world, you're the loser. Obviously, that shit came from somewhere, right? I know for me, subconsciously, I sort of make a character in a game that's kind of like, yeah, that's a cool version of me, sort of, kind of, because the real world me could never be this cool. And that's what, you know, video games with character customization give people chances to do. Maybe this question doesn't deserve to be looked into 
as deeply as I'm going into it, but hear me out. Hear me out. Hey, yo, Clan Rally, shut the fuck up! Why are you even talking about this? All right, all right, look, 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 I know. M maybe the, the thought is kind of stupid, I know. But obviously there's no way this thought process is conscious. But maybe, just maybe, it's there deep down for most people in their subconscious. Some people really don't like the way they look. And that's totally understandable. I seriously get that. Being able to make your own character in a game gives you a little chance to project your ideal self onto a character in a game that you like. And it's really cool and it's really innocent. I just think it's really interesting to look into what the kind of thought process may be for someone who makes a certain type of character. I just kind of like that thought process and that look into it. Like I said, wanting to create a character in a video game that looks like a quote unquote ideal version of yourself is, is really cool and overall an innocent thing that doesn't harm anybody. But I bet you're wondering where I'm going with this, huh? There's a reason I brought you all here to the end of this video. And it's something much deeper than having a little fun inside of a fucking video game. Hey, what's going on guys? I just, as always, wanted to thank you guys for watching the video to the very end. I'm so glad I'm uploading again. Um, the past few months has been, you know, uh, a lot of stuff's happening. I just moved out, so I'm all settled in now and I'm I'm really enjoying it at this place. And, uh, you know, work's been stressing me out, but I mean, hey, you know, at least I'm uh, getting back to it. I wanna get back to streams too. I'm shooting for this weekend. So mark your calendar the end of this weekend i'll put a date up on the screen but i'm shooting for then to get back to the stream we're gonna play delta rune um so I look forward to that um but i just want to say thank you for watching the video um i have another planned upload coming up coming up soon the sequel to this video um but i got a whole bunch of more ideas in the works ah I'm so excited but for real thank you so much for watching to the end of this video if you like the video leave a like subscribe um you know, follow me on TikTok and social media, whatever. Um, but thank you guys. Thank you so much. Hit that notification bell if uh, if you feel like you guys want to. But thanks again. I really do appreciate you guys watching. And that's it. Your boy Clambo is out of here. See ya.